John Fred, I'm, I'm wondering a little bit about um, the whole notion of the distinguishing between disease activity and d disease progression. These are sort of new terms when we think about that. And what's, what are they and, and why is that important when we think about treatment for inflammatory bowel disease? Yes, uh, thank you, Gary. I think this is a very important emerging concept. In the past, we were considering uh, Crohn's disease and ulcerative colitis are inflammatory disorder, like intermittent. So you have a flare and then the patient is going in remission, then you have a new flare and so on. But what we have understood now, and this is on the wake actually of rheumatologists, because it's the same concept as for rheumatoid arthritis, is that as soon as you have a flare, you have some damage caused to the gut, and as a consequence of damage, you have complications such as, for instance, in Crohn's disease, fistulas, abscesses, stenosis, and then you are losing bowel function. And the activity of the disease is in intermittent, but the progression of damage is permanent. And so it's a complete switch of thinking about the disease. It's not an intermittent chronic disease. And actually, when you look in the textbook, in the past, it was defined as an inter intermittent. It's a progressive disease. And uh, exactly as rheumatologists, now what we want to target is to block the progression of the disease in the long term, and not only to block symptoms. So it's, it's a new concept for the treatment. Yeah, I think it's a fundamental yeah. change in thinking, I think very important. Tell me a little bit about personalization of <laughs> IBD therapy. Why is that important? Yeah, so the point is that uh, if we want to block the disease progression, basically you may say, okay, so let's hit hard from the beginning in all patients with the most effective treatment. But as clinicians, we know that all patients are not alike. These are very heterogeneous diseases. Some patients will progress, some patients will not. Uh, and the point is that we, we want to, to know from the beginning which kind of prognosis will have the patient. So it's all about prediction. Are we able to predict from the beginning what will be the course of the patient? And so far we have some clinical predictors such as age at onset, uh, severity of uh, endoscopy and so on, but they are not very strong. So there is a huge effort to try and find uh, biomarkers, so serology, genetics markers, in order to predict. So this is the first part of personalization. Second part is how to predict response to drug. Because we are still amazed, for instance, even with anti-TNF, there are patients who are not responding at all, and we don't know why. And then if we are able to understand why, those patients maybe will need something else. And finally, I mean, based on the mechanism of the disease, maybe we'll be able to classify in the future not only UC and Crohn, but UC1 with this mechanism of action that we need this kind of drug, and then UC number two with another mechanism of action, and then uh, another drug. And this is uh, basically the concept of personalization. Yeah, excellent. And then tell me about the, the need for education of patients. Like, uh, oh. how important is that, and what's the fundamental reason for why we need to educate our patients? I, I, I think, uh, to, to me, this, maybe this is the most important. If we Because even if we want to change or thinking about the disease. If we are not involved, able to involve the patient in, in this change, it, it, it wouldn't work. It, it wouldn't work. And then there is a huge need for education at all levels. For instance, uh, we are using very potent drugs now with uh, side effects. So you need to educate the patient about the side effect. You need to discuss uh, with them about risk benefit. Patients want to believe in some forms of treatment, and we discussed a lot about nutrition, about fecal transplant, and so on. So we need to educate them what are the data. And then, uh, if you are not able to educate, you will not be able to uh, have those patients choosing the right drug. And education is also key for adherence to treatment. It's very well known, especially for oral drugs, that up to 50% of patients don't take their drug. And then if you educate them, you, you, you tell them how much it's important that adherence is key, then you are training the patients, and then it has been shown that by training the patients and empowering the patient, which is uh, the term, then the results are amazing. The adherence to the treatment increased by 30%, and the long-term results as well. Uh, excellent.
Thank you very much, Sean Fred, and uh, <laughs> thank you. Pleasure meeting you. Thank you.